Hello, my name is Colonel Ed Palacios. After 37 years of military service in both the Army and the Marine Corps, uh, I retired last year and I am now serving as a senior instructor for the JROTC program at R.L. Paschal High School in Fort Worth, Texas. I also have the privilege of being the instructor for a military history course that's offered through the school district. So, history is a passion of mine, military history especially is a passion of mine. Um, in this particular lecture entitled Women's Expanded Roles in World War I, uh, this lecture is intended as a part of an undergraduate level course. Uh, this lecture would be one of several lectures that support the class History of the Great War, of the Great War World War I, and its impact on contemporary history. Uh, one of the things that I try to get across to my students is how events of the past can have significant second and third order effects that affect us years later. Uh, World War I being no exception. Uh, much of the controversies, the controversy we have in the world uh, is, can be directly related to events that unfolded uh, during World War I and after World War I. Now, in 1914, at the start of World War I, most women in the Western world could not vote. Uh, they could not serve in the military. They held very traditional family roles, and this was on both sides of the conflict. Um, but the beginning of World War I saw a great surge in patriotism uh, on both sides in both men and women. And since uh, women could not join the military, at least not initially, uh, many of them chose paid or unpaid roles that were traditionally done by men. Uh, but the, the demands of manpower on both sides of the conflict necessitated uh, giving women these opportunities. Uh, now these women, they were, uh, they were willing to volunteer to do a number of things. Uh, many of them served as military nurses, doctors, translators. Uh, many of them volunteered for the Red Cross. They worked uh, for soldier comfort funds, and they also raised funds for charities that supported uh, the war, or supported the soldiers uh, in, within the conflict. But as the war progressed, uh, many women were, um, were filling manufacturing and agricultural roles, uh, traditional roles done by men. Uh, in 1914, the famous German armaments company Krupps, uh, they did not employ any women. But by 1917, they made up 30% of the workforce. In Britain, by 1917, there was, a, it was an increase of one and a half million women employed in what were traditionally male roles, uh, many in the artillery shell production. And a lot of these women uh, suffered lifelong health impacts due to their exposure to the chemicals used in the armaments industry. Uh, so they paid a tremendous price for their patriotism, um, but it also gave them an opportunity to enter a workforce and earn money that they had never been able to do before. Uh, women worked in roles such as ammunition testers, switchboard operators, airplane sewing. Uh, you, you've got to keep in mind that in World War I, the vast majority of aircraft uh, were covered in fabric, and that fabric had to be stitched onto the frames of the aircraft uh, otherwise, you would lose the, the stability of the, of the airframe. Um, bank tellers. Uh, prior to this time, women were not trusted with money. You know, women were not considered uh, responsible enough or intelligent enough to be able to handle money. But the war necessitated them filling these roles. Uh, tram operators. Again, that was traditionally a male-dominated a male role but women were given the opportunity to be tram operators. 
female doctors uh, initially were not desired overseas, uh, not by the British anyway. I think the Germans were a little more liberal on that. Uh, but in Britain, they did not want women uh, near the front lines. But women were not satisfied with that answer. So the Medical Women's National Association paid for many of the female doctors to operate at Red Cross hospitals near the front. And by 1918, 80 female doctors were working in France for Britain. Now, we must consider... As we look at the roles that women served in during World War I and beyond, we have to consider that the history of that expansion of women's roles really goes back well beyond that. And I would argue that the, the start of, of um, the stage was set during the Protestant Reformation. Because if you think about it, during the Protestant Reformation, you have a society of people who are starting to think outside of the status quo. And they're questioning uh, their role as Christians and the role of the church and the role that the church had over their lives. Uh, fundamentally, the Catholic, Roman Catholic Church and the stronghold it had on most people in Western society. So the Protestant Reformation starts the idea of individual rights, individual liberties, uh, thinking for oneself. And so if you think about that, then you can, you can look further and say, well, that ultimately led to the Age of Enlightenment, where you have a new learned class of people, a lot of intellectuals, beginning about 1700, and lasting into the mid-1800s. Um, so the Age of Enlightenment saw a lot of a rise of reason to challenge the status quo. You know, why, why do we have to follow the old monarchical rules? And a lot of Western Europe saw tremendous changes in the way that governments were run. Uh, but, you know, even in Britain, where you have a constitutional monarchy, um, there was a lot of social change starting to take place during the Age of Enlightenment, where you have a, a lot of intellectuals like Thomas Jefferson and um, James uh, or uh, John Adams, you know, a lot of American founding fathers, but a lot of a lot of intellectual thinking in France and in Europe uh, in general that starts questioning. Why is our society the way it is? So that, that kind of critical thinking was starting to happen. Uh, this leads to the Industrial Revolution. So beginning in Britain about the year 1760, we have the Industrial Revolution, where we start seeing women working in factories, a lot of textile industry, different types of, of manufacturing in roles that generally they didn't have before that. They were not available to them. So now you have women working and earning a sustainable wage, uh, even though they may have been living in the factory uh, dormitories, you know, they're still surviving based on their own labor. And so the ideas of individual rights start coming to the surface. Um, so in World War I, um, you know, we look at the, the, the roles that women were playing that were traditionally men's roles. Post-war, most people expected society to return to the type of society they had prior to the war. But women had already been exposed to some level of independence. You know, they enjoyed making their own money. They enjoyed being able to provide for their own children and not being a, a dependent of a man. And so these ideas are getting out there. You also have the ideas of women's suffrage. So there's a lot of social changes that are evolving over the course of years that I contend began with the Protestant Reformation and then slowly evolved over time. Uh, Post-World War I saw um, saw the expansion of women's 
demands for, for equal rights. And then we go into World War II, which was roughly 20 years after World War I, and once again, women are put in these roles that were traditionally men. And by this time, society had evolved even further, so that by the end of World War II, women are now firmly believing they have a right, they have a role in the American workforce. And so women begin expanding their demands for equal pay, equal rights. Um, and the rights of women today uh, can owe mo much of its advancement on the, uh, the roles that they played in World War I and World War II. So thank you very much for listening to my lecture, and I hope to see you again soon.